Hey parents, contractions play a vital role in the birthing process. In this video, you're going to learn how to time them, partners, how to know mama is having them without her telling you, and how to interpret them. I'm Bridget and I'm a childbirth educator and birth doula, and if you're new to this channel and you haven't subscribed, make sure you do, and then hit the little bell so that you stay in the know when a new and empowering educational video comes your way. So first of all, what is a surge? A surge happens when the muscles of the uterus, which your baby is in, tightens. And the purpose of that tightening in early labor is to draw the uterus upward to help open and stretch the cervix to allow your baby to pass through it. And as labor progresses, all the muscle fibers that have gathered up at the top of your uterus now push baby down through the birth canal with each surge. Now, timing your surges is pretty straightforward. As you begin feeling your uterus tighten, you begin the timer and mama, you'll feel it build like a wave and then it'll start to recede. And when it relaxes, you stop the timer. Now, sometimes surges aren't felt in the uterus, but more in the lower back or even in the hips. And if you want an idea of what contractions might feel like for you, you can check out this video. Many women will experience cramping in their lower abdomen as labor begins, but cramping is usually a consistent dull ache, in which case there's nothing to time. No matter where you feel the sensation, if it's a rhythmic sensation that seems to be coming on and building and then subsiding and it's gradually intensifying over time, it's likely a surge. Contractions come on and then go away with distinct time between them. If you think you are experiencing surges, but you're not really sure because they're pretty weak, then you don't really need to bother timing them. Once your surges are undeniable and seem fairly consistent, then you begin timing. You can time them with any timing device that you have, but I do recommend using an app like Pregnancy Plus, Pregnancy Tracker, or Contraction Timer Encounter so that you can see a history of your surges and how you're progressing without having to think too much about it. Partners, a really great way for you to get involved in the birth is to be the one working the timer. Only time about three or four contractions in a row to get an idea of where mama is at and then wait at least an hour or two or until there's a noticeable change in the sensations that mama is experiencing or the frequency of the surges before timing again. Typically, surges will last somewhere between 30 seconds to a minute and a half and there are some good cues that mama is beginning a surge that you can see without her telling you. She'll often stop talking. If she's learned how to properly breathe through a surge, she'll start using her distinct de-stressor breath, which I teach in this video. She might start moving in a way that she only does while she's experiencing a surge, like rolling her head around or swaying her body back and forth. If she's not coping well, she'll tighten her, her shoulders, she'll furrow her forehead and probably hold her breath, which creates more pain. And partners, this is where you step in and help her reclaim her control. And if you're thinking, I don't know how to do that, don't worry, I teach you how to do it in the Built to Birth online class that you can check out in the description below. Then as the surge comes to an end, mama will take a big breath and then sigh and then return to being more relaxed or acting more like her normal self. And this is when you know the surge is over and you stop the timer. And when you're timing, there are four things that you are looking for. How long is the surge lasting? How far apart are the surges? How long have they had this pattern? And how is mama acting during and after each surge. A general rule of thumb is when surges are lasting for one minute long, about three to five minutes apart, and have been showing this pattern for at least one hour, it's time to go into your birth space. For first time parents, you generally can wait closer to that three minute mark, but as second or third time mamas, you usually want to go in closer to that five minute mark because labors are often quicker. However, mama's behavior is crucial when interpreting contractions because if they're close together but mama is totally fine, then she's probably still early on in the process. When she can't talk through the surges and after them, doesn't return to her normal self, is more quiet, reserved, seeming like she's mentally in another place, 
plus her surges are one minute long, about three to five minutes apart over the course of at least one hour, then you have great indications that things are progressing into active labor and you should start heading into your birth place. Once you've decided to go into your birth place and as labor is continuing to progress, the surges will become more frequent and it no longer becomes so necessary to time them because labor has already been well established and your time partners is going to be better used helping mama breathe and find comfort in labor, which I teach all about in the Built to Birth online class. You learn counter pressure, acupressure, labor positions, aromatherapy, visualization, and so much more to help you help mama achieve a happier, healthier, and easier birth. And you can check that all out, plus a free mini birth class in the description below. So that is basically everything you could ever need to know about timing contractions. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.